Hello everyone. Today I'm going to create something that I think is quite interesting. I'm going to do this random variation of the facade that I did on my last video. On my last video I had this facade that we controlled the opening and closing of the panels by a second surface that we created and undulated in front of the facade. And as it got closer, it would open the panels and as the second surface would go further away, the panels would be completely shut. But something that we do a lot is try to create a randomness to it. So create a random variation of the panels can be quite interesting. But the thing is that we usually want to control that variation. We don't want it to be completely random for different reasons. We have zones of the facade that we want to have more exposure. Maybe they are stair cores or something that we, we don't need to open panels there. Uh, so there is always reason for us to, to want to control that randomness. And create a random effect usually would only be done with Dynamo or other plugins. Or, but again, m the purpose of my videos and most of the videos that I've, I've created is trying to create some fairly complex geometry but trying to keep it uh, simple that you don't have to be an expert in dynamo or know very complicated stuff to create to replicate this so today i think this is a great example of what i've been trying to do i have a very simple formula to create something that i believe it's quite interesting so this is the the result that i got i didn't test it a lot so I could have uh, done something a bit different, but I think is is quite interesting. I'm still controlling the areas of the facade that are more, have more sun exposure, but still all the facade is suffering a, a variation due to a random parameter or a formula that I did to create this randomness. So let's dive into Revit, and I'm going to show you how cool this is. So here, this is my old facade from my old video. So if I come to the visibility graphics and I turn on my mass, you can see my second surface that controls where the panels open and close and we'll keep using that. So if you look at each one of these panels, if I select them and in the properties I, I look at this L parameter, this is the parameter that measures the distance between one surface and the other. You see the ones that are more open are closer, 5 meters, and the more close are further away from the second surface, 10 meters. So we want to use these numbers. They will still vary gradually with the surface. So we have to do something to it. And uh, the way we can look at it, analyze it better, is come here. And you don't have to do this part. It's just me trying to analyze the data better so I can have a clear picture of what I'm doing. What I'll do is try to schedule this length, this length that keeps varying. So I can look at the numbers and see if it's random enough or what I want to do with the numbers. So the first thing that we'll do is come here to the properties and we come to the L parameter and let's make it shared so we can schedule it. So we can say OK and we can load it back into the project. Okay, so I'm coming here in the schedules and I'm gonna create a new schedule. Uh, schedule generic models. Let's put the name of the family in our L parameter that now we can see here. So if I filter to include only families that have this L parameter and I'm gonna sort by family in that dimension. So here we have it. Let's export this. I don't need any of these. So what I'll do is I'll open this text file with Excel. And if I select all our numbers, all our reporting parameters, and just use conditional formatting to analyze better what's happening. So red is the bigger number and green is the smaller, you see that they're just increasing gradually. So to make this random, 
all I'm going to do in Revit, and this is the same form that we'll use later in Revit. I'm going to use round down. I'll select this number, and the number of digits will be zero. So I'll get this number four. If I then say that I want this number minus this number, I'll get just the decimal numbers. And if I copy this down, and I use conditional formatting again, you'll see that the numbers are varying more than the first list. Although they still go up and down, up and down, they're varying more. If I want to make it better, even more random, I could come round down again, use this number, and now I say that I want one digit. And I want this one minus this one. So if I copy these down, I select this and use conditional formatting. So there is not a, a readable uh, standard to the way they, they change. So it's, it's quite the, all that we're doing is use this formula, quite simple. We round down first and we say one minus the other, B1 minus C1. So we're going to do the exact same thing in Revit. So I'm going to come back into family. So I'm going to edit this one. And this width of this panel and shut according to the proximity to the second surface. So we're going to keep the width parameter. But if I hide these, I'm going to make these move. Before, we had them always at the same place. But now I'm going to make them move randomly. So I'm going to use these. Now I want to use normalized curve parameter. And I'm going to create one parameter for the top ones. Call it normalized curve parameter. And one parameter to the bottom. So inverse probably. So if I come here, I'm going to use these same logic. So we want to use the reporting parameter. It's L minus round down L. This is what we want. Press enter, you see that we get this inconsistent units. This is a common error with Revit formulas. When the formatting is different, it doesn't like it. And the way we solve it is create this divide, divide the L by 1, and this way it will work. So you'll see that we get 0 0.9, so the normalized curve parameter varies between 0 and 1. So if we want the second one to vary as well, if we use the same formula, they will, all, they will both move up and down together at the same time. If we want to do something different, we could try to use a different variation formula, but we can actually just do this one minus normalized curve parameter, and that will always be inverse. And for this case, it works quite well. Uh, but the thing is that in Excel, we didn't round down just once. We round down with another decimal number. Revit doesn't have that functionality. This formula doesn't do that. It always go to the integer. But we could uh, get around that with another trick. We just come here and multiply this by 10. When we do that, this length parameter would move one decimal number to the right. So we would come here and um, multiply this one by 10, come to this one, and do the same, multiply by 10. And what we're doing here is we're moving one digit to the right. Uh, now we're getting a 0 and 1 because we don't have two digits here. That's easy to fix. If we come to the units, we make it two decimal places, we come back to our formula, and the result that we're getting is different from what we had before 0 0.9. So there is always a trick to get around these things, but in this case I've tried it and I actually prefer the result when it looks like this and I'm gonna load it into the project. And there you go. Uh, let's open the shaded view, maybe it looks better.
we can see, still see the areas where the panels are more open, allowing for more sun exposure in the areas where the panels are more shut, because this is still controlled by the, by the second surface distance. But the randomness creates a totally new effect that really, I think it's quite interesting. So I hope you enjoyed it and please uh, leave your comments below if you'd like to see something else. And thank you for watching. See you next time.